um, start with your feet and all you're trying to do is stand of course I mean otherwise it wouldn't be called standing meditation and imagine that you're sitting on a stool and you have a golden ball of light between your legs and as a matter of fact you're sitting on one and that you have a golden ball uh, holding like this very comfortably that is expanding and where you also have a tennis ball underneath your armpit so very comfortably and feel, imagine that you're being pulled up by a string of golden light and feel your entire spine suspending and relaxing, imagine that your hands are wrapping around the ball very comfortably and just stack yourself on your feet so stack your ankles on your feet and then feel the relaxing feel your knees stacking on top of your ankles and then feel that relaxing feel your hips stacking on top of your knees and feel that relaxing feel your shoulders stacking on top of your hips feel your elbows hanging from your shoulders feel your ribs um, Bits, wrists extending out from your elbows feel your fingers lengthening feel your neck lengthening and so on and so forth and as long as you feel that you're sitting and stacking and lengthening and you feel becoming more and more comfortable you're right there not bad. That looks pretty good. Okay. Um, so, Jen, you said, will there be question and time? Let me just say this. Uh, the question and answer is actually more important than the lecture. The lecture can come at a different date. Uh, I have a schedule, but quite honestly, I actually care more about what happens in the moment than the schedule. The schedule can come later. But the question that you have cannot come later actually needs to be resolved right then and there that's that's really where the cream is and so the, to answer uh, to answer that you know will there be a question and answer i'd like to make a blanket statement the question and answer uh, form is always open it's always open and always uh, please feel free to ask questions to whatever is being uh, lectured or taught because in some ways I could say that what I'm lecturing is an excuse to see whether I can actually evoke some questions within you that's really actually the thing you know because as I'm saying this there's got to be some questions sometime uh, or at least I'm hoping so so thank you for that question that question to uh, ask all questions that was a great question so okay so starting with a quick review we started with um, uh, something that's called an integral theory and uh, there are five aspects to the integral theory and they start with quadrants lines levels states and types and we discuss this because it really actually um, over time will help you uh, discuss some uh, very uh, how should I say sometimes difficult to discuss things and so quadrants we notice that actually uh, your experience of life is actually divided into four quadrants uh, objective experiences and subjective experiences and then we found out that really actually your objective and subjective experiences also again divide again uh, to individual and to um, groups uh, what's the opposite of an individual? collective, thank you so 
So, and then, so this is a subjective individual experience and this is a collective subjective ex experience. And this is, we call this the we experience. This is where you have a shared experience. And then this is the quadrant of the I, you know, what you experience. And then this is the quadrant of the it, what, you know, uh, the, the objective, the objective uh, aspects of things. And then this is the quadrant of the it's. The same thing, but really actually in the collective sense. Um, and then we explored that there are many different intelligence, uh, intelligences uh, within uh, these quadrants. So there is a group intelligence, there is a subjective intelligence, there's an intelligence from the perspective of the objective, um, and then there are levels within them, and basically meaning that there's a hierarchy, a natural hierarchy to things, a natural hierarchy to your intelligences. Um, and then we talked about the states within these different intelligences, that you have a good day and a bad day, that sometimes you have a great experience and sometimes maybe not so. Um, and then we also discuss, uh, discuss types. We, used to, we then used this actually foundation to discuss um, the different aspects of our system. Uh, for instance, we discussed that, in this, uh, that our system is really actually, if I draw this again, two, basically train your subjective um, experience by getting support from the other quadrants. And so what we had said is, is that what we train in the subjective experience is basically what we call the absolute and self-understanding awareness. And this is the depiction in our system um, of your natural developmental stage. So these are, in, these are the different intelligences. Uh, this is your spirit. And this is your body. This is your heart. And this is your intellect. And then this is your purpose, where the arrow is going. And we showed how they actually all need to integrate towards this one focal point. And that our system was a study of your spirit, uh, body, your, uh, your heart, and your mind in its hierarchy. And we also showed that this is actually the natural developmental stage of your life. And then what we showed is, is that there are components that actually affect us, um, such as uh, the three bodies. So we actually constantly bring awareness to this as I uh, discussed yesterday, uh, that basically you have the space, you have the energy, and you have the physical body. And the correlation that we showed is, is that if you adjust your physical body, it actually has a direct impact in your subjective experience. Uh, and how your subjective experience actually has a direct impact in your objective experience. And so uh, our system works on the subjective by adjusting your physical environment, meaning starting with your body. Um, and then from uh, the its quadrant point of view, we actually have um, the actual system of the school, um, and then we have the school itself, the institution, uh, and then we have a community, out, uh, the community, and these three different, um, uh, uh, three different components form an environment, and the environment actually starts shaping and affecting the body. Because of course, I mean, what else? So this is, so this is nature, 
And well, this is the both nature, and this is basically the elements affecting your nature from a physical perspective. And you know, this will become more apparent, but you can't avoid this. This is this is a uh, a physical um, this is a physical law. And then we showed how our um, we have three different cultures, three different subjective experiences at large. Uh, the Judeo-Christian uh, experience from a cultural perspective. The Taoist experience. And then scientific uh, culture. Um, so this is, this is a system where basically, culturally speaking, we have uh, the different aspects of these three different cultures coming together, actually, and uh, forming a cultural experience uh, to support your understanding of the absolute and of self-understanding and awareness, understanding the nature of awareness. So um, this is a system in the whole. And then we started going in uh, to the detail from here. where if we have this quadrant, then we started getting into the details of this diagram in terms of how to understand this. And we actually, one of the things we said is, is that this diagram is actually really nothing more than love your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And we started discussing this in more detail in terms of how this affects your developmental cycle into one focal point. And as we discussed this, we talked about how we have to follow our interests and how as we follow our interests um, and as we get stuck, uh, that actually is where we are in our developmental stage and how to get through them. And then we got to this wonderful thing called complaint. Isn't this very interesting how we get to complaint? Sometimes I have to look at it myself. What an interesting, what an interesting um, journey. So, um, and then we talked about the nature of complaint. So we talked about the nature. What is the nature of complaint? And then we talked about befriending it. Blasphemous, <gasps> befriending. And then we talked about awareness, unawareness. Meaning that become aware of, the, uh, of your criticism and become aware of the part that is aware of the criticism. So we started doing some mind bending. Uh, so awareness of awareness. And then today, I'm supposed to lay out uh, some concrete things that we can try during our times of fasting as we fast from complaint. Any questions so far? Yes, please. We talked about uh, how we got to complain this is. A complaint in the nature is the desire to be whole. And when you're trying to integrate yourself, the reason we actually showed this graph is to show uh, the nature of integration, how many different elements there are to your own self. And before we got this, 
we basically uh, use this to explain that you are a nation upon yourself. Of course. Um, we have so many different aspects within ourselves, so many different people, that uh, it is equivalent where you actually have um, your nation onto yourself, your, your own nation, because there are so many different aspects to yourselves. Right? And the question was, um, how can you... Um, bring peace onto your own nation. Because when there's division within uh, your own nation, you have complaint. And so if one aspect of yourself is at war with another aspect of yourself, and you don't understand how to bring peace between them, then we call that complaint. And that's actually how it led into it. So did that answer your question? And this is just actually for my own sake and my own memory. The question was, how did you get to complaint from integration? And that was my answer. That essentially, we are actually very complex human beings. I mean, human beings are very complex. Uh, you know, just to give just a, a quick exa example for you, Julie. Um, there is a part of you in your evolution that not only are you a nation to yourself, but the entire... Uh, length of evolution is within you because as you're growing up, of course, we have a reptilian brain and from the reptilian brain, as you grow, uh, it, uh, the part that develops, it actually goes to the stages from being reptilian to mammalian and then from mammalian to being a human and you know, you go to a uh, vet uh, and you got a doc, they'll say, yeah, it's a, they have the intelligence of about approximately up to two or three years old. And what you will see is, is that if, you, uh, if you're with kids, really, actually, it's really not that different from an actual intelligence point of view. And so what this shows is, is that we actually have to go through distinct developmental stages. Now, however, here's the important thing. As you develop, and the part of you that's million develops, and the part of you that's human develops, the reptilian part never goes away. It never goes away. But there's an assumption that it may. Because as you grow, until you reach a stage of integration, you are actually primarily stuck in one of your developmental stages. And so we discussed the concept of integration that when you are stuck in your intellect, that uh, you, know, you will in some ways be in denial of your emotional self. And then when you're stuck in your emotional self, then you'll be in denial of the intellect or the reptilian or the instinctual part of yourself. It's not until you reach a spiritual stage where there's a willingness for you to integrate the intellect, the emotional, and the instinctual self all together. And but that process is about the same as basically um, starting a communication between these different individuals within yourself. So you've got a, uh, a, a more of a reptilian human being inside you that, that emotes itself like one. You have one that behaves emotionally like an elephant. And then you've got another one that behaves like the rider on top of the elephant. And oftentimes the communication between them, and between them is very limited. And that conflict, that struggle, uh, is not that different from basically a nation that doesn't have a single vision, a focal point. So, okay, hopefully that answers more of it. Um, but that's how we got to complaint. And then, so there was a nature of complaint, the desire to be whole, to be integrated and to actually get to your next developmental stage. And so when you're, when, you're, when you're having complaints, that's actually very, very important to be able to recognize that. So we, we befriended it, and then now we went to awareness uh, onto awareness. Basically becoming aware of 
that part of you that is aware that you're being critical. And we talked about the consequences of that F as to how important that is in terms of being able to program yourself, how important it is in terms of uh, being able to find freedom and find a new self. Okay. Now, from here, what to do? Complaint fasting, or fasting from complaint, or fasting, period, is an awareness exercise. If you've ever fasted before, you will notice, uh, or you'll become aware how important, or how, not important, let me rephrase that. It is important, but you will notice how much of your mind is occupied with food. It is a wonderful realization. Uh, I was amazed. I would like to say that without exaggeration, more than a third of my thinking or somehow my processes was somehow related to food. Either I'm thinking ahead about food or I'm thinking about the food I just ate or I'm thinking about what I want to eat, uh, and so on and so forth. I contemplate about something what somebody else's, uh, else uh, eats, uh, what to make, how to make it, whether I have enough time to uh, make it, whether, can you see this? I mean, this is when to go and buy. Uh, this is a very extensive business. And you realize how much of your time goes into it. It brings really awareness to this. And then, if you actually did some more awareness exercise, you will notice that when you do fasting, uh, not only do you realize those objective things, but you realize your emotional component. So some of you may have noticed that when you get stressed, all of a sudden you start craving something even more acutely than you would have otherwise. And then all of a sudden you realize that it's not just about food. This is a wonderful book. I forget what it's called. Um, it's something, it's, I know it's got the word woman in it, God, and then food in it. it it's... Thank you, okay. So, it is an excellent book. It's an excellent book. I recommend it to anybody. So, um, anyways, you realize all of a sudden, it really has nothing to do with hunger. It really has nothing to do with hunger. It has actually uh, a whole different world to it. And that awareness is very, very powerful. Uh, you realize that actually you're not eating just to, uh, because you're hungry. And hunger starts having a whole new kind of meaning. So fasting actually brings awareness and it can become a very powerful tool for bringing focus and uh, uh, awareness so that it can become the very basis of change, the very basis of change. The definition of integration, so, and you will see now where this fasting will go. The definition of integration is to actually have a singular focal point that you can basically work all the different parts of you into one place. So as we demonstrated, if you're doing an unbendable arm, it's not just simple as saying doing an unbendable arm. Uh, unlike most people think, when you think of an unbendable arm, people th tend to think in terms of keep it, uh, keep it unbending, meaning that if it's bending, act against that force. But it's anything but that, right? Of course, it's anything but that. As a matter of fact, it has, you don't actually uh, concern yourself with the other person at all. Um, Alexis, can I borrow you just for a second? Uh, you know, I, I love this demonstration because it's very powerful. Can you stand right here, please, sir? And ex uh, what you call it? get into a front stance and point your finger like Babe Ruth. I have never seen him, but apparently he points his finger. So, um, 
So now when you do this, think about this. Alexis, uh, I'm gonna bend your arm, but can you actually think about straightening your arm, like in terms of like not having it bent? So, yeah, right? Now this time, forget this, and just focus on this lengthening and how it strings along, but also focus, like, let that sensation, let the rest of your body sink, yeah. And then let that experience lengthen you. And yeah, and when you feel the pressure, forget the pressure and just extend beyond that. I'm getting dizzy, so I will stop here. But you get the point, right? It's different. Why? Why? The rest of his body is working in tandem. They're not working in opposition. And if you don't have this understanding, then you will always try and have the wrong solution, which is, <laughs> which is to try and straighten it, right? Thank you. So we understand now that life's solution may not be as simple as just a singular solution, meaning that, let's say, for instance, if you're not able to do something, that you don't just try and do that, that it actually is accumulation of a multiple things coming together, and that it may actually not, the solution, the integral so solution may not be that simple. You know, um, I used to have a drinking problem. I will tell you this, to solve my drinking problem was not as simple as saying, I'm gonna stop drinking. I found out that actually it's a very complex business. It's a, it's a complex business of actually understanding what my instincts are doing and understanding what triggers it. And then it's a complex business of understanding my emotional nature as to what it's seeking to do and then seeing how that manifests in my mind and energetically. So here's an example. I noticed that the, the time I crave a beer uh, is this. When instinctually and physically, I am irritated and my nervous system is irritated. And it creates a slight hum in my brain. It literally creates a slight hum in my brain. When I get a slight hum in my brain, I feel anxiety. I stop breathing right up here. And I feel slightly suffocated. And when I get that, all of a sudden, it triggers memories within me that makes me see a bottle in my mind. It's very interesting. And all kinds of feelings start flooding my being. Feelings of relaxation, the feelings of taste, and they enhance in my mind and my mind gets fixated on it. And at that point, another part of my mind that understands that I have a drinking problem, the human part, goes, uh-uh, and goes, no, you should not do that. And then the part of my mind that is fixated on this beer says, be gone, be gone. And then there's a, no, 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 you shouldn't do that. And then you know, this is the, 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 the climatic battle, battle between the devil and the, the angel, as we always say, right? One shot is, drink it, go ahead and drink it. He's like, no, oh, you shouldn't drink it, you shouldn't drink it, right? I mean, it's like this whole thing. Uh, and this is actually, so integration, this is what happened. I, um, so the, the deeper, I was fortunate that I was going through this training uh, where I had a bad day and I, I literally felt irritated. I didn't know this, of course. This is actually what I found myself doing. I found myself having this conversation and then before I knew it, have you ever found yourself doing this? Before you knew it, you found yourself holding the beer and you wonder, how did I get here? Now you know you have a problem when that actually happens. And then you have this and then at that moment, at that moment, I had, enough, I had enough desire and training and interest to actually become aware of what was happening. And here's the key thing, I did not try and stop to drink. If I tried and stop, then I would have not had enough mental uh, um, awareness to be able to watch what was happening. This is the reason why you should not resist evil in that sense, you should not have tension, you should not resist. It's um, counterintuitive. You need to resist, but not in the manner we are used to resisting. Like this example, not force against force. You have to bring a whole different kind of solution to it, called compassion. We call it compassion, 
understanding. We call it forgiveness, different inter integral ideas, right? And so in that moment, I, you could say, using big spiritual words, I forgave myself. I forgave myself that part of me that couldn't help it. And because of that, I started having awareness and interest, and I started looking at myself slightly differently. And this is what happened. I realized, as I held it, I was like, why are you holding this? And I said, well, because I want to drink it. And then the question next to me said, why do you want to drink it? Well, because it tastes good. And then the next question was, so is that pretty much it? And then I scan my body. Now, I'm asking one part of myself, right, the heart. And that's pretty much where it got to. And then I scanned my body, and I was surprised because I was never aware how much irritation there was in my brain. I was caught up, consumed by it, actually. I was so caught up in that I was fixated on this beer because that was my solution. See, this is what happens. When you think you find a solution, you grab onto it. And there's so much tension here that you lose awareness of the rest of yourself. This is one of the reasons in Tai Chi training, it warns you against grabbing the other person and tensing. Why? Because you lose awareness of yourself. And so as I loosened the grip because I was not fighting against it, I could actually have a little bit of awareness of myself and I realized to my surprise I had how much irritation I had here. And then I asked myself a new question, is this why you want to drink? And the answer was yes. And in the very moment I was able to take a breath because I had done enough breath training, I felt some relief in my tension and I felt that desire dissipate slightly. And I asked, if I can relax my brain Will you let go of this? And I heard, maybe. Maybe. I'll be honest. It was a maybe, because it wasn't quite sure that I would be able to get there. It knows that it has gotten there using alcohol. Interesting, isn't it? Now, this is, there's so many different facets of it. There's my instinctual self involved. There's my intellectual self that's lacking this understanding of myself altogether. And then there's this emotional component, and there are actually more components than that. How can you reach a complete solution where you don't have this relationship of charge anymore without actually having gone through these different aspects of yourself? It's going to be my question. And what you will notice is that when the, the, the different components fall into place, there's a complete letting go. And that problem never refuses, uh, resurfaces again never in the same manner. And that's called enlightenment. Why? Because there's light onto the different components. So having said this, what are we going to do for the next 21 days? What are we going to do for the next 21 days? Beer. What did you say? Drink beer. <laughs> the, the words of an enlightened being, drink beer. My friend, I shall, I shall uh, or join you in this quest, maybe. So, okay. So here's what I, um, uh, what you call, uh, this is the, what we will be doing for the next 21 days. So for the next 21 days, I said Monday, uh, and on Monday, uh, you know, I will send out a reminder that we're starting this. But you know, feel free to get started ahead of time, because this is exciting. I'll be very honest. There's nothing as exciting as this. And integration is towards a focal point, a focal point. And what I would like to say is that the first step of awareness is become aware what it is you're complaining about. You, to your surprise, you will find out that it's actually not as many as you think it is. You will find out, to the contrary, that they're actually all somehow linked to the same thing. You may have a couple, actually, but there will be not as many as you think they are. This is key. So let's say from just because you're complaining a lot, or find yourself complaining a lot, that actually does not mean that there are a lot of things you're complaining about. 
oftentimes you'd be surprised. So the first thing is just become aware what it is you're complaining about and then list them. Each time it happens, have a journal with you and list it. It will be enlightening. It will be enlightening. Number two, categorize them. And you can't, you know, this, is, this can be a fun exercise. You know, don't, don't, don't make this an accounting job, unless you like that, unless you like that. But it's more kind of, I'll be honest, you won't even need to do it. Just look at your list. Just muse over it. And all of a sudden, a pattern will start emerging. This pattern emerging is called integration. And then, a natural focal point will emerge. And this is it. You will know what it is you're interested in resolving. Do you see what I'm saying? So you will know your interest. And this interest is your developmental stage. Right? Why, would, why else would you be stuck there? It's because that's your next thing that you're working on. Whether you know it or not, you're actually already working on it. That's why you're complaining. Otherwise, you wouldn't be complaining. Right? Right? Question on the list. Yes. I would like to, uh, so the question was the list, how detailed should it be? And what I would like to say is, is that it is up to you, but um, this is the key thing. Make sure you follow the Zen principles. So in, in Zen Buddhism, there is an idea that what you create on the outside is a direct reflection of your mind. And so if you want to have clarity, what I would like to say is if you have a journal, select one page that you can go back to. Don't let the list be scattered in different places. This is key. And then do your best to create the most cleanest, nice looking list you can. And preferably, if you are a computer person, then you can use a computer. But if not, I'd like to recommend that you start on an actual notebook. Um, and the reason is because the actual sensation of writing brings peace into your body. And so that's a very good training tool. So use it as a meditation tool. When you write, don't rush. Write how you want to feel. One of the most powerful things you can ever do for yourself. So does it answer your question, sir? I see. Uh, so the, actually the question, I, I misunderstood the question. Uh, so you're actually asking how detailed should the list be? As detailed as you want it to be. This is your list. And so this is where you will f be following your natural interest. And, be, and here's the key thing. You will start seeing how much information you need before you can solve something. It's one of the greatest gifts. You, it, once I understood how much information I need, I don't stop before I reach that point. I don't ever try and short stop myself. Because that's who I am. So great question, great question, thank you. So the natural focal point will emerge. I will actually, this is not a step, but I will make this a step because this happens all the time. Don't try and solve it. I didn't used to have this step in here, but over the years as I've been teaching, this actually became a step. Yeah, you will see, oh, this is the problem, and then you'll have this great desire to solve it. Don't try and solve it. Don't try and solve it. Just notice different aspects of it and record it.
this is the reason you should probably have a notebook or something with you at all times. As I was telling the story, you should, you're Einstein, and you know, there's turbulence, and you had this insight. You, you just had a complaint pop into your brain. And then you go, oh, oh, that's what it's complaining about. Oh, yes, that, uh, this is my focal point. Oh, I see that thing. And then you can scribble it down. You'll be passionate about your complaint. Now, imagine that. Imagine being passionate about your complaint. Isn't it a different kind of life? I like to say it's a great life. And a new picture will emerge. A new picture will emerge. And I would like you to, again, uh, just notice how they fall together. And they will fall together in this order. Uh, not order, but you, will, you, will, you, need, you need to find these different parts. You need to find the aspect on your mind, heart, uh, what you call instinct and body. This is senses and energy. If you hit all these components, step seven, they will integrate around the purpose. And this is when it will let go. This is what a complaint leads to, a focal point. See, these, when you, when you, what, what you will notice is when the complaint is happening, these different things are trying to solve the problem all by themselves. Do you see, none of them are against you. Here's the issue. The bicep, when it's tensing, guess what? It's actually trying to help you to keep the arm straight. The tricep is also trying to keep the arm straight. The rest of your body and your mind, they're just going, oh, like this, is also trying to keep the arm straight. They're all doing it by their own way. But they're against each other. Not because they want to be, but just because they have no awareness of the other parts of themselves. It's a lack of understanding. You like this, right? Of course. And then, if you watch them, all of a sudden you'll see a single focal point that can integrate all of them, and you'll realize what it is that you've been wanting to learn all this time. Don't try and come up with a purpose. The purpose will emerge. You have to find what the purpose is. If you want to be spiritual, you can say this. This is how you know what kind of a purpose you receive from God because of how he created you and what he's calling for you in that moment, if you will. And so that's, if you want to take a spiritual bend on it, that's the spiritual aspect. It's a spiritual perspective, right? There is a subjective experience. And so this is described from a very objective quadrant, how the different functions align with each other. But this is where you have a spiritual experience, where you talked about the transcendent experience, the integral experience. That's where it comes from, right? Okay. This is actually pretty much it. Do you feel these steps are clear? You will be getting copies of these notes. So no problem. So don't worry about this. You will be getting them. And there's also the audio that will be coming with it. I just want to make sure that for the next 21 days, there's clarity as to what we're doing. Your life will transform doing this. So any questions on this? Yes. Oh, I see. Okay. So, uh, the, the first part is a very good question. So, the question was, what happens if the whole person's affect is complaining, where it's overflowing with abundance and complaining, where you can stop it? And here's the first part. Uh, what I would like to say is, is that do not try and stop it. Do not resist it. Again, resist not evil. And um, there are two things. 
there's a matter of being able to handle it, and then there's a matter of not being able to handle it. And the honesty is, is important. If you can't ha handle it, then see whether you can remove yourself or you know, do as best as you can. But if you can, see whether you can have compassion, because the reason that complaint is so overflowing is because that person's been stuck in that developmental stage for so long. Imagine how much pain there, there is in that person's being. Imagine that the war that's going on within that nation and not having had any relief from that war in all these years. And maybe one thing we could do, and we feel that pain, maybe one thing we could do is at least listen to it until you can maybe bring the same kind of awareness into that person's being. But that takes a lot of listening. And maybe we need to listen to that person more than we would like in some ways. So, but you know, what I'm suggesting is of course not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy. But it's actually the most integral uh, solution to it. But sometimes we're not able to do it. In that case, I would say remove yourself from it as best as you can. Because you're not going to be able to stop the person from complaining. So, but that was a beautiful question. Thank you. OK. Um, the time has way run over. I appreciate your patience. Uh, but we'll be closing. But if you have any further question on this particular uh, feel free to ask me after uh, the class, you know, after the class, and uh, feel free to definitely post it on the e-community because this is the closing remark I would like to make. Remember the story of the coals, that when you're alone and doing this, you will be a sole coal burning by itself or trying to burn by itself. And I would like to say that even though this may seem easy, you may find that you will get stuck after number two. This is not as easy as it looks, actually. And what I would like to say is that when you are stuck, share your stuckness with the e-community, and I will answer. And all the other people who were stuck but didn't want to admit it will also be freed. <laughs> and there will be much healing in our nation. <laughs> Or, or you may be stuck in some of these other stages, saying just, I'm trying to not solve it, but I can't stop myself from solving it. Help. Right? So <laughs> <laughs> solution junkies. Yeah, exactly, right? We're all solution junkies. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, it, okay, so, uh, in summary, for 21 days, we will be on a journey to bring light into our complaint. We will listen to our own nations. We will listen to ourselves, the different parts, all the different, uh, what you call, um, uh, individuals within our populace. And as we get to see that, we will see naturally within our nation what our vision is that's always been there, that can integrate them all. And we will run towards it together. And the support group is going to be the e-community so that we can communicate our experiences together so that we can grow together. Because see, the times where we are growing by our individuals are gone. There is no more power in that. It used to be that individual uh, subjective enlightenment was uh, emphasized. If you look at it, those times are going away. There's a new time that's coming where, as a group, uh, we're going to be reaching towards enlightenment together. And that's the new picture that's emerging. And that in itself needs understanding. That in itself needs exploration. And so let's start this on the e-community. Let's see what kind of miracles that actually brings. You will be surprised. It's a power unto itself. And uh, that's actually where we'd like to stop today. So, okay, let us stand and let's stand in a circle and let's close.